I went up into the Riverland to see him play in a final and his side was getting beaten so he shifted himself out of full forward and went into the ruck and dominated the game in a side one. <laughs> so Tony has just got that great belief in his own ability and he was talking to me probably a month ago and he said, Doug, I've lost my spring. I just haven't got it at the present moment. I've lost my spring. And I think that was the day before he stood on that fella's head against North Melbourne. So if he's lost his spring, God help us when he gets it back. McGuinness is a thumping kick. On the run, you'd give him a chance with a vacant goal square, but... Uh... McGuinness just asking the umpire there, Bruce, uh, about the mark. As Allison creeped up, was it Stevens on the mark as he crept up a yard or so? Gives it his best. Mark! He's a fullback's nightmare. High flying, fast leading, straight kicking. Tony Modra, the spearhead of the Adelaide Crows. Born at McLaren Vale, south of Adelaide, on the 1st of March 1969. He has two older brothers and two older sisters. His family moved to the Riverland. Little did he know when he came back to Adelaide, he would become one of the most talked about footballers in years. Little did he know in the winter of 93, he would become the first Crow in history to kick a hundred goals. Modra for goal number nine, and the difference will be just four points. He's kicked it. We went up and saw him, Rod O'Reilly and myself, and he was a young man and we met his family, her parents, uh, Val and, and Doug, which is his father, and the young lad wanted to be an apprentice mechanic. So I had a very good friend of mine, who uh, owned a, his own new car outlet and we got him an apprenticeship which Tony wasn't suited to uh, and he decided to give that away and then we got him a job at Coca-Cola uh, and he was still a bit wild and woolly and he decided to give that away and he, he always showed a lot of potential uh, and always going to be something special and after about a year down here playing in our, our junior grades uh, he decided to go away, he came back in about 87 and played a couple of games and then in 88 I think he played a couple and then went back to the Riverland and had 12 months up there. In 1990 I think he came down and played about 10 and that was just the start of the young man and look we ran our auction a fortnight ago and to see him at the auction the lad has just gained so much as a person in, since his association with the Crows it's just unbelievable. He, he must have signed over 200 autographs on the day and anyone, any young man of his standing could have well have thought they had a big head, but the way he handled it was absolutely marvellous. Your attitude to training, to football, your whole attitude maybe to life has changed. Why? When did you sit down and say, well, hey, I've got something here? How did that come about? Do you know what I mean? Well, everyone seems to like asking me this question, I don't know why. But um, yeah, I suppose I have changed my attitude towards football, probably because I'm getting a bit older now, I suppose, and I just wish I couldn't start off a bit younger. But um, finally I've just um, woken up to it and um, accepted it and so now I'm just going on from there. And it was evident in the very first round of the season that football fans around the country were seeing something special. Against Richmond at the MCG, he began the year in style. Once again that hole, Bruce, they're really keeping it open, the Crows forward line, and their plan is just to kick it forward into that open space. And Modra's having a picnic down there. And McDermott comes away in the bright sunshine. Modra, very good mark. McDermott, Anderson, gets around Knights. Just sets it up for Groom, takes a nice mark. Now Modra goes now. 
and he'll get him. It's a good kick. Fregenza with plenty of space. A second bounce carries him to the wing. A third. Bickley escorting him. About four bounces from Bickley and then Modra. Well, that is great football. McDermott. Well played, McGuinness. Just uh, gave free a hip and shoulder and he's unable to get a kick away. Rowe, centering kick. Modra, lovely take. Well played. Very good effort by Modra. Class. Off hands. Slapped out of there eventually by Smart. Pittman to the run of Wiedemann. McDermott again. He's been everywhere this afternoon. 25 possessions. This is Jamison. Long high kick down towards the pocket. Modra on his chest. Smart attacks it. Jamison. Good hands. McDermott to Smart. Lovely play. Now Bickley. Short. McDermott to Jamison. Modra. Got it. Very good kick. Great mark. Good play. Hodges, 11 goals against Geelong. The uh, club record. Modra, about, you reckon, to get into double figures. Well, it was an excellent grab under the pressure of Howard. He was bustled and bullet just before the ball came to him. Still managed to take it with both hands. Going for goal number 10. Leans back, drop, punt, puts it through. He finished the day with 10 and the surge had begun. But there were to be more tests, tougher opponents, more trying conditions. He'd kicked a bag and was immediately a marked man. What Tony Modra would face next was the stingiest defence in the AFL. He'd be facing the West Coast Eagles, the reigning Premier. A team the Adelaide Crows had never beaten for Premiership points. It's out for the... He's going to be OK. Maynard takes a fine mark. The Crows come out of defence. They're in the middle of the ground now and a chance for Tregenza to go up towards full forward. Tregenza's kick is good. And there's a mighty mark taken by Mondra. Ah. On the outer side, he can run. Drifted into the centre. And Tregenza leaves it for Groom. Groom gets the hand pass onto Maynard. Down to full forward. And another good mark in front of the eyes taken by Modra. That's a brilliant mark, isn't it? Yeah, terrific stuff by Tony Modra. Did that last week too, but only very strong hands when it's coming in flat and hard about head high. Terrific. And up against class opposition there too in uh, Ashley McIntosh, who's uh, apparently, or supposedly, the quickest player in the West Coast Eagles lineup. Modra going for his first. From 47 metres, good looking kick. And a very handy one after the siren. Here we go. Harding, beaten for it. And the Crows very quickly through Anderson after taking the hand pass from Liptak. Down the wall, full forward. Mokra takes them up. Can the champs get... Again, Adelaide's full forward led the way. By three-quarter time, the Crows were six goals up and coasted home to win by half that margin. Modra got six and 46,000 fans cheered. Dermot provides run-on, goes down towards Modra. And that is just a terrific mark. You can't do much better than that. He's, He's exciting to watch, isn't he? He, is. he just <laughs> sets his mind on attacking that ball and away he goes. He's fantastic to watch. Strong marks out in front of the body, reminiscent of uh, Jason Dunstall at his best. Jarman. Maynard went off the Ooh. ground, trying to go off the ground again was Jamison. There's an eagle player down hurt, that's Wilson. Maynard to Tregenza. Tregenza storms up through the middle. The second bounce, not a particularly good kick, but it landed on the chest of a teammate through. Well, it was good pressure from Hines chasing and also Matura. Forcing that miss kick, but it worked out okay because uh, Groom, the player in front. Chris Groom from just outside 50. We saw that stammering approach in the first quarter when he kicked the goal. This one's away to the right, but oh, how easy is that? How easy is that? Another 45,000 turned up to watch his next display, again at Football Park, this time against the Lions. The Crows skipped away late in the first term, perhaps more as a result of Fitzroy's poor kicking rather than their own inspirational play. But in recent seasons, the Lions had proved, if nothing else, that losing was no longer acceptable. 
they had won their fair share and liked it. They hit back and hit back hard. At the long break, just one goal separated the two sides. The momentum was with Fitzroy. After the break, they grew in confidence. Their attack was more direct. And late in the third term, they led by 25 points. A great goal! Sensational play, Jamie Elliott! Late in the third term, Tony Modra took over. What can the Crows do? They want it more at the moment, don't they? Well, look at the desperation in the middle. I'll tell you in that square. You've got five dollars there, you wouldn't go and get it. Seacat. Oh, he charges away, but there's some holding. This is the ironical cheer guy. As the free kick had gone to Rodney Maynard. Target is Modra. Yes! Oh, he's an exciting player. Well, yeah, you couldn't blame Zanotti. I was watching Zanotti. He was in front. And he's got so much room in which to move Modra that Maynard could just take his time. And at the critical time, when just when Zanotti looked over the right shoulder, Modra had gone to the left and got away. You couldn't blame Zanotti on that occasion. The Crows need it. This for his fourth. And this to close the gap and to stop the run. 40 metres out. That's a lovely kick. That's a goal. She's going to make for a great last quarter. Yeah. It'll be tight as a drum. So wherever you're viewing, I hope you can stay with us. Pittman gets the hand pass out to the Wied Wiedemann. Long kick. Oh! That's a sensational mark. That is fantastic football. Well, you couldn't blame anybody on that in that situation. A lot of pressure. Wiedemann could only do the right thing, and that was go long. Seacamp kept his eye on the ball. Look back, this. back. It takes a lot of courage to do what Seacamp did. So not he attempting to punch, but what excellent play by Modra. You could not criticise anybody in that situation. Those strong hands too, Don. Oh, that was just that was just terrific from all three. They all attempted to do the right thing. One for Mark of the Week, but he's now got to convert. Still on centre wing with Brown, he hands it over to Pittman, now under to Genzel, he's had uh, his up, up to possession, here's Mokra! Wow, looks like Tony Mokra's going to be the hero. Magnificent mark again, they might have to make a change here and get Alistair Lynch to pull back. Under a minute remaining. I know, set. I set that three How minutes. Important. Tony Mokra, have a look Don. Yeah, fantastic. Well, that is a great mark again, but they might have to move Zanotti now and get out of the down there. Well, no, no, Zanotti, he was blocked in well, by Jarman. I know, but this guy's on fire. This for number They've six. They've got Alistair Lynch to put there, of course. And they're doing it, actually. Tony Modra. Kicks. And he puts the ball number six. What a game of football. A great five minutes of football by this exciting full forward. In five drive. minutes, he'd turned the game around. All that was left was one final assault. The two well, sides battled till the end. The Crows kick. grabbed a the thrilling win by out. one solitary and point. Modra had again kicked Steve six kick goals. Kick that made it 22 in three games. And that had everybody talking. He wanted to go and play in Redcliffs and decided that that was his future and he went up to Redcliffs and played and he stood a lad called Holmes that had just been then drafted to the Sydney Swans and he had a bad day and he kicked 13 on him. So <laughs> management committee decided that he wasn't going anywhere and with help from a, uh, uh, a couple of people on the management committee we decided that we'd block his path to go to Redcliffs because he was under contract to us and a chap called Steve Pobletus and myself worked very very hard on him to get him to stay here sort of thing which he did. It's much to his dissatisfaction I can tell you. He brought a contingent of about three lawyers and about eight people down from Redcliffs and they faced the tribunal down here in Adelaide. And the tribunal ruled in our area that he was a contracted player and he would stay here and play. So Tony did come down. I think in that year he played 10 games, and the rest is just history really as to what he's gone on to. It's come from the blue really, hasn't he? I mean, he's only, what, 24 years of age. Uh, in some sense, a, a bit of a late, late-ish type starter. He's a kid that's, uh, that's got it all, he's got poise, he seems to have humility, he's a very good team player, he, uh, he applauds his teammates, there seems to be good chemistry working there in the, in the, uh, in the Crows. 
In round five, the Crows travelled to Melbourne. This time it was the Demons at the MCG. Melbourne was now led by Neil Baum, who'd spent the last decade sharpening his coaching skills in Adelaide. He knew the Crows players backwards and used every bit of that knowledge in carving out an upset 11-point win. But it had taken less than a month to realise Tony Modra was something else. Tregenza. Good play uh, by Bickley. Tregenza towards Modra. Great mark. It's a wonderful mark under pressure. He's a talented footballer. Gee, that assisting uh, Shepherd by Bickley to allow Tregenza to get through just made all the difference there. His preparedness to help his teammate there unselfishly. And you finish up with a shot at goal. From limited opportunities, he booted another five goals, and while he led the goal kicker's table, he was also the straightest kick in the competition. His 27 majors were accompanied by just eight behinds, less than any of the other nine leading goal kickers. He's quite remarkable. Give him nine shots for goals, and he'll generally kick seven goals too. At the worst, six goals three. He's had an atrocious game if he's kicked five goals four. But bear in mind, you kick five goals for the season, you kicked a hundred goals. Adelaide fans couldn't get enough of him, and the comparisons were coming thick and fast. I suppose if you would look at uh, footballers of the style of uh, Jason Dunstall, um, I would put him in that category in the sense of his fast lead, his ability to take marks down on the ground, but probably has something that Dunstall doesn't have, that he can rise above the pack and take marks of that calibre. I also look at him a bit like Alex Jezelenko, uh, in that mode of leading and doing uh, unusual things. Um, I suppose to uh, you, you would look at Malcolm Blight uh, in that of modern era. Um, Freddie Phyllis, of course, was a fabulous full forward, uh, but of a different style. I think that uh, Tony's a, a bit unique, a modern full forward. No, I, I think he's sort of uh, one of a, you know, one of a breed of, um, I'm thinking about McKenna's and, and that in Victoria. Uh, I don't think he parallels with them, and I don't really think the parallels with some of the full forwards uh, through here where Ken Whelan, you know, in years gone by, was uh, had a good spring leap and a grab, but Modra's a little bit different him, I think. Is he as good a mark as you've seen for a while? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think for his, his height and his weight and his capabilities, he, um, he usually gets up there and uh, you know, has a firm grip on the ball. And who did the man himself base his game on? Oh, when I was up in the Riverland, I used to be watching all the AFL games, and I'd have to say it probably would be either Gary Ablett, Tony Lockett or Jason Dunstall. And they're all full forwards that I admire them a lot. Do you look at any of those for your own game, or are you just doing an individual thing? Do you, do you look at the way Ablett plays, or Dunstall, or Lockett? Well, um, it'd probably have to be Dunstall, I'd say. I mean, um, the way he leads strongly and marks the ball strongly, I can't, kind of tend to follow him a bit. I've taken a couple of videos home and watched him, how he plays and so forth last year when he kicked bags of 10 and so forth and just gone on from there. And it was Jason Dunstall who would lead his Hawks in the Crows' next game. In fact, the entire match became a battle of the full forwards. You can bet that. And there's a similar story, isn't there, at both ends of the ground. When they go forward, open forward line, fast leading full forward. Now congested forward line, nice kick though by the 17-year-old. Modra with a fly. Oh, good. Fantastic mark. Darren Jarman, Ben Allen, Dunstall. High one by Anderson to centre. Hodges with a leap. Groom, well done Groom. In a tight situation. Gives Modra half a chance. One out. There's a tough ball to control. Well played Modra. Jinky with him. Very well played Modra. Brilliantly played a goal. What a bit of footy that was. The three-time John Coleman medalist finished with nine goals in a match-winning performance. While the Hawks got up by ten points, Modra was again best for the Crows with seven. metres from goal, Modra comes on the lead, too much carry on that one, but Modra went it best in flight, leads back in the race, caught about something, picks it up and kicks a goal. The tasks facing Adelaide weren't getting any easier. The Crows ventured to Victoria Park, a ground where they'd never won against a team they'd never beaten. McGuan at half back, good kick to centre wing, Kelly in the front spot, Wiedemann with him, Kelly recovers, played his first game back off the interchange last week, Anderson caught, gives it up to Wright, his pace will enable him to get away, Hart puts a, well, put a tackle on him, now Watson who can kick a goal from here, from 50 metres, attacks, goes bang and boots it! 
accelerating stuff there. Round seven would prove no different, but even die-hard Magpie supporters were forced to applaud the boy who could fly. Now Robbins at the back, Moncourse there, hurled up, Tregenza, under pressure from Shaw, Jarman playing well in the second quarter, back to McDermott, centering kick. Mike! Oh! 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 Oh, wasn't it sensational from Modra? Well, I hope he hasn't hurt himself here. Oh, well, let's is. have a look at this again. Look at this. With the fly up very high and early into Gary Pert and over the top of Shane Warwood also. Oh, wasn't that great to watch? Is he exciting? Well, he uh, was a great talent. He, you know, he just looked as if he was probably after that. And I hope he's OK because he's one of the stars of the AFL. And from 40 metres, he's kicked his third. Adelaide back in business here. Well, Bernie, this man is a superstar in the future. If he can just keep going, he's a wonderful talent. Well, the first game I ever saw him, Bruce, he played against uh, Footscray in the Foster's Cup game. And he just marked everything that came his way. And he's continued on. He's now kicked 37 goals for the season. He takes him from the front, from the side, from the back. It doesn't matter where he is. There's a kick from McDermott. He sets it up over the top. Modra, that is sensational stuff. Lee to bring it back in. Goes out wide gets Bigley, he's had a lot of touches early Bigley's kicked from half back up to centre wing Brown in the back spot, Richardson in the front, Jarman taken away by McGuinness important player, gets some uh, distance, Modra in front, good mark he left Victoria Park with five more, his total had now jumped to 39 goals 12, McGuinness now lip tacks on for him that's the way it goes Not a long kick lip tack, and I would doubt if he'll get this. And with uh, time running out, it might be Adelaide's one chance to uh, get a goal. Drop punt. It's right there. Modra! He's got it. Modra kicks his fifth goal on the siren. But if he thought he was being hailed as a superstar now, he had no idea what was to happen after the next game. Adelaide versus North Melbourne at Football Park. Going into the game, the Roos, who had changed coaches after being destroyed by the Crows in the Fosters Cup, were top of the ladder. Adelaide, after a good start to the year, had dropped to seventh. North Melbourne was in town seeking revenge. The first term honours belonged to the visitors, but Modra was again on target will kick Adelaide to within scoring distance up towards full forward Rockland may be held Rockland will get the goal and eventually after about three quarters of this first term Adelaide kicked their first goal through Tony Modra the second was a reversal Adelaide kicked six North Melbourne kicked three punch by Micken was disciplined Rockland Modra Snapshot goal! Well, this is just fantastic footy. Nashenko over the back. Maynard to lip tack. Good looking kick. What a wonderful kick by lip tack. And Mike was certainly not 100%, but he is uh, capable of running and marking, and uh, hopefully, from Adelaide's point of view, kicking a goal. And we've seen this piece of action a number of times this year lip tack just throwing the ball out to a vacant forward line and not much you can do there Glenn Archer good mark to Modra well what a season he's had 10 goals 6 goals 6 goals 5 7 and 5 and in some of those matches he's kicked uh, well in one in particular he's in two he's kicked more than half of Adelaide's goals lining up for number four kicks from about 48 meters drop punt it looks good it is at the long break, just nine points separated the two in what was becoming an epic battle. In the third, the Rue machine took over and was marching towards possibly its best victory of the year. Running at it, Maynard tries to run him down, Smart holds it up. Rock gets rid of a good play, Adelaide. They've conceded nothing here. Now a chance for Ramiro. Left foot snap, hard goal. Oh, McCann grabbed hold of half, but it's a goal.
The Crows needed a lift, but no one expected the aerial display from number six, Tony Modra. It was one of football's great moments. Just trying to get rid of Stevens, who did excellently to hold him there. A Guinness free kick. I don't know why they're cheering, because you mentioned at half-time that the statistics with the free kicks are just so lopsided in favour of Adelaide. 19-4 to four at half-time and 10-1 to one in the second quarter. McGuinness is a thumping kick. On the run, you'd give him a chance with a vacant goal square, but... Uh... McGuinness just asking the umpire there, Bruce, uh, about the mark. As Allison creeped up, was it Stevens on the mark as he crept up a yard or so? Gives it his best. Certainly setting Gary Ablin a task now. Have a look at that one. Jezelenko took a ripper in a grand final. That one was second to none. And he kicks his seventh. Oh, give him the key to the city, Robbo. What a mark. What a goal. What a match. Well, I don't think you can see anything better than that, Jared, in footy, can you? He takes the mark in the goal square, kicks the goal. It's his seventh. And by the gee whiz, aren't the fans excited here? Well, he has written his name into the history books with that leap. But this was a North Melbourne Adelaide fans were unaccustomed to. The ruse were, in a word, sensational. Six minutes into the final term, they led by 29 points. Most teams would win from there, but they didn't have Tony Modra. Bickley, sweeping hand pass, out for McGuinness. Gets back onto the favoured left foot, runs around and kicks it in towards centre-half forward. Marty contest is good again! Great hands, Modra! I'm sure all the Fitzroy players back at home would be saying well this game isn't won yet because this man single-handedly put on a three-goal burst as Rock comes off the ground for Pyman which really grabbed victory for the Crows when all look gone. If he sinks this one, the crowd will just go up another notch, Bruce, and uh, I'll take a bit of that money. Let's have another look at his list of goals so far. He's going for his eighth goal tonight. Lovely kick. He's got eight. Rotto, 10, 6, 6, 5, 7, 5 and 8. He hasn't missed out once. Uh, great performance again by the full forward. And having a look at the replay, this is the danger man, McGuinness. He is the one that will inspire this victory. They've got to get the ball down to this freak at the present time. What a roll he's on. At the back, Scholl kicks it forward. And well done, Smart bats himself, runs away from Carey. Kicks it wide, play on his own as Mitten. He's marked outside 50 metres. North Melbourne have got to get some people into defence now, even if they play that loose man across half-back. Mulder's got it again! Well, let's keep an, an impartial eye on this one. I thought Mulder definitely pushed him out there. Umpires under a bit of pressure from the home crowd. This this crowd here makes the Victorian Park crowd look uh, well ineffectual. Just a little tuck push out there. I don't think Archer was complaining. Modra for goal number nine, and the difference will be just four points. He's kicked it. Lip tack tries to force it forward. Ramiro gets a kick out. But it's not clear enough. Rowe has kicked the full forward. Michael's got it. That was a push out. But the ball is with the full forward, Michael. He's kicked nine goals. Again, just a little push. But gee, you wouldn't be going to give the free kick against him here. There's 45,000 screaming fans. Oh, we need to put a hand on the ground. <laughs> Going for 10. And he kicks it. Well, I've been watching footy for a fair while, but this comeback has been enormous. Gee, what's he worth for? Uh, listening to $200,000 for players in the AFL, what's this bloke worth to Adelaide? 
Well, it's worth plenty because uh, commercially he's going to be one of those players that can stack them into the ground like an apple, like an off, a locket. He'd set a club record against North Melbourne. He wasn't just the talk of Adelaide and South Australia, he was talked about all over the country. Yes, well, there's Jezelenko, there's Blight, there's Ablett, and there'll be a thousands of people here saying in 10 years' time that I was there the day that Modric took that mark. I know I will be, Bruce. Just a fantastic individual performance. And when you consider the time of the game and the, the fact that he kicked 10 goals, what a fantastic game. And in rival clubs, the talk was how to stop him and what the options were. How many testaments in the Bible? You know, there's, uh, there's plenty. Um, uh, well, you can start from first up in the... Uh, he gets phone calls during the week to start off, you know, it's before the game. You can get uh, supporters of the other team before the week, uh, before the start of the game. You can get, um, you know, people that in the first, uh, the first sort of handshake either don't shake your hand or step on your feet or spit in your face. Uh, and that's happened. And uh, you can go through and uh, the first bounce you can have uh, elbows in your stomach and sort of, uh, all over the places. And uh, I think going through, you can have people that um, um, hit after the ball's gone. Um, you can have people that don't, um, they don't even attack the ball at all and think your head's the ball and that's, uh, you know, and gets, that gets punched a, bit, a fair bit. So, yeah, full forward's got a fair bit to put up with. And um, no doubt, they, you know, Tony's taken that into consideration and uh, Corns has seen it all happen too, so he's got a fair knowledge of the sort of pranks that go on. They are trying to work him out as each week goes by and they will combat him in some way but then of course we don't know whether he's reached his full potential. I think that he's been unfairly tagged at the present moment in some of the games that he, that he plays sort of thing that uh, in even the last game that he played there was a couple of free kicks that if it had been on the other end of the ground Tony would have got and it, he's he's going to have to discipline himself and I think that he's accepted that well down at the Crows they tell me he's in the gym and he's working out and I don't think we've seen the best of this young man yet he's got he's got a good football brain he's unselfish he gives off goals which he could possibly go for himself and uh, I think that he'll develop even further and, and could perhaps set some records in South Australia that are going to take some topping but a week is a long time in football six days after his record-breaking performance he led the Crows at the MCG against Kevin Sheedy's baby bombers it was one of the few games in which he was held perhaps proving just how important he was the new sensation kicked three of Adelaide's ten. Essendon's stunning last quarter was more than Adelaide could match. The Crows went down. Fury ducks past McDermott. Well done. Kicking towards half forward. No mark taken. Screaming through Buick. Doesn't miss these very often. Does not miss it. Now ninth on the ladder, Adelaide's season was at the crossroads. Its next opponent was a much improved Brisbane side and it was as competitive as any game they'd played. At one end, an experienced champion in the form of Roger Merritt. Inside, three of them, unchecked. Gaster chips in short, Fletcher. Kennedy runs outside him. Fletcher goes it alone, 60 metres from goal. Sets it up for Merritt down there. Merritt, surrounded. It mattered not. At the other end, the new kid on the block. He was averaging more than six goals a game. Today was better than average. Into full forward. They've got the numbers here. Modra blazes away at goal and has kicked a goal. Anderson in the background there has been a fine player all day for them. Quiet just before half time, but here he is again as if on cue. Grabs the ball 70 metres from goal and finds Modra. He was lucky to get the periscope down just in time there. <laughs> Goes towards the wing. Robbin in from the side at the second attempt, takes the right hand brilliant hand, hand pass, sends Lee away, spears yeah. the pass into Modra. By his own standards, he may have been disappointed with his kicking, but seven goals five in anyone's language was still a match-winning performance, and win the Crows did. On the ground, goes in short, McDermott, not one of his best games so far, goes looking for Modra. One could have expected both Modra and Adelaide to suffer some sort of a letdown following South Australia's successful State of Origin carnival, a carnival that netted the full forward six goals. But it seemed there was no stopping him. Then decided was covered, goes with a long one, good looking kick. 
Footscray put pressure on itself in the first term. They say bad kicking is bad football. And nine shots in the first quarter returned just two goals seven. Adelaide's start was just as slow, but the finish was brilliant, and number six led the way. Beautiful kick, back it comes, Modra's mark, 15 metres out. Well, they really do have to sort this out, I think. Four Footscray players there, all within the shot of Modra and neither one of them decided to make the effort to get there. It's a real mixed match. He's confusing his play at the moment, Terry Riller, I believe. So Motra should kick this one and put the Crows in front with a run into half time to come. Put the throw. Anderson dragged off the kick. It virtually goes straight up in the air. It's knocked back to him by Wind. Anderson inside the 50. Bad luck for Tui. Taken by Hodges. Here's Modra. Five metres out goal. Jamison. Robin. McGuinness. Up to midfield. She had lap players everywhere now. They can really move in for the kill, couldn't they? Anderson goes down towards half court. Leaving out the end feet. Reynolds was up in front, Kellett trying to keep it in front, couldn't control it, Pittman back on the ground now, over the ball, eventually it's slapped out by Kellett, taken by Smith, gets it to White, who takes on the tackler, and he was marked by Visca, the kick comes from McDermott, down towards centre half court, well done by Smart, he's got great balance and poise, he goes in short and finds Modra, well we've seen that on more than one occasion tonight, Smart contesting the ball in the air, hitting the ground, and not even looking like slipping over or falling. 16 and 6 for Smart Dennis. Yes, Peter Foster again just uh, falling at the crucial moment, but Smart, uh, as Dennis said, just, just critical, you keep your feet. You know, you have to go back onto the footy. So Mike going at goal number 6, directly in front, 35 metres out. Good looking effort, straight through the middle. While the Crows got away with their slow start against Footscray, Carlton was less forgiving. A first quarter avalanche set the game up for the Blues, a game in which Modron never really got going. Just five kicks and three marks for a return of two goals three was his worst return for the year, and it reflected in the final score, Adelaide easily beaten. Perhaps the pressure of such sensational performances all year long were beginning to take their toll. More than ever before, everyone wanted a piece of Tony Modra. Against Geelong, the Crows were comfortable winners, but this time he'd left his kicking boots home, and his return was just one goal five. But the newspapers looking for that extra sale were relentless. Photos, life stories, promotions, it left little time for football. Modra was now a prisoner in his own house. Was that a free kick? Yes. It is. Free kick in Silvani. Free kick to Modra in the back. At the start, I didn't really know what to think, but now I've sort of got used to it, and I'm pretty well used to it. Like I said, does it does it annoy you? It did at the beginning, but now I've, I've kind of got a manager through the football club, so they help me out a fair bit, and it's kind of kept me mind on the job, so it's great. So I suppose it's a situation where Bill Sanders had to come in and sort of take control of things, otherwise it would get more out of hand. You, it, that's basically the reason, isn't it? Yeah, it is really. I mean, there was a time where I couldn't even ask my own phone at home because it had the media ringing up and so forth, but Bill's taking care of that now, so it's good. Maynard in front, Dragenza at the back, just about brought it down, bit of judgment, McGuinness through some very heavy traffic, finally affects the hand pass, Dragenza gets it back from Rowe, McGuinness left foot snap off the side of the boot, might be a behind, might not be even there, Modra this time, yes, he's got it! Tony Modra finally gets his first goal. But within a week he was back. The fact that Gary Ablett had overtaken him on the goal kicker's ladder meant little to Adelaide's full forward. The Swans had just broken their worst losing streak in history and were pumped for two in a row. But Modra and the Crows went about putting a quick end to their celebrations. Jamison, long hand pass, Rowe, he's on the wing. He's kicking towards the right forward pocket, well done by Modra. McDermott, Bone, then Bickley, long kick by Bickley up towards full forward. Visca does well. Oh, terrific. It's a goal to Modra, but give it, give it to Visca. Short pass for Kelly. Kelly looks for Daniels, but up high. Wren should be the mark, and it's been paid. Handball away for Jarman. Short kick, not bad. Nigel Smart. The lead 
and the pass is good too. The lead was very good by Modra. A real stalwart. And he gave it away to Bays. His kick chopped off by Tregenza. And Tregenza's kick in towards centre half forward. A good mark taken by Hodges. Hodges has got Rowe. No, he hasn't. He's got Modra. Oh, he's dumped. Was that unfairly? No. But Rowe is there to help out the full forward. Severe hand pass for Smart. He handled it very well. Modra's got it this time. Landed awkwardly, but it was a good mark in the finish. And they do hurt. When you come down hard on your buttocks like he just did, really does knock the wind out of your sails. Ooh. Wow. Particularly when you're taking a heavy knock about 20 seconds earlier. Well, a pretty good effort in the finish by the full forward. He's kicked four. So five goals out of 18. I think the Crows would be looking for a little bit more from Tony Modra. Still, if you can win the game by a comfortable margin, and he'll be the leading goal scorer for at least 24 hours anyway. He's kicked the goal. With the Swans out of the way, Adelaide's charge towards the finals was in full swing and Modra's charge towards the 100 was right on cue. Modra was in devastating form. This time he teamed with Scott Hodges and Randall Bone and they crushed St Kilda's defenders. Between them they kicked 17 goals. Bone steers it low into the breeze and Tony Modra will be kicking for goal again. Hollow again, close to the boundary line. Shaw, awkward half volley, it ricochets across to McGuinness, to McDermott, to Tregenza. How often do we see that? Tregenza boots it towards centre half forward. Jarman goes back down there with Burke, coming through strongly. Here's the skipper, Danny Frawley. Away he comes, little chip pass towards the middle. Cut out by Wren. Here's a great opportunity now for the Crows. Numbers everywhere. McDermott to McGuinness, sending him away on his left foot. He goes looking for Modra. Saw him all the way. Oh, what a terrific kick into the breeze. And Modra gets a goal. But it's been chopped off by Rusciuto. He gets a port. Jamison. Hart, goal scorer. Marks just over centre wing. Slides on the middle hand pass to Schwert. Schwert's left footer. Hodges at the back. Modra. Modra a chance to shake off Frawley. He's got it. Great goal by Modra. And that is 100 in his career. Modra kicks five today. 100 in a career which has spanned two seasons. The first season all right. The second season sensation. Yes, well, any, uh, anybody prepared to bet further than 10 goals? Two goals in less than a couple of minutes. A great goal, this one to Modra. Goal of the day status, probably. It's been all the Crows in this last quarter. Here's Jarman. Hurriedly boot the ball. Lee. Oh, Rowe. 15 metres in the clear. Steers it low. Modra! Again, they were singing his praises. It seems so simple. If Modra played well, so did the Crows. Smart knocks it down in front. Whitman did very well to use his body, but fumbled the ball. Grant went to ground. Smart to Wren. Wren is simply so cool. Gets it across to Rashudo, who boots it towards the other side. Jarman knew something about that bounce. He read the book. He kicks inside the 50. Modra comes on the lead. End to end, Stafford Football Park. And the Saints have known some black days this season. I, for one, thought they'd make the finals. I know some people doubted it. And they were good judges, as it turns out. But I don't think they've had too many darker days than this one. They are really having their collective noses rubbed in the dirt. Mondra going at number seven. The 22nd is on the board. You always need a spearhead, don't you? And if you've got someone that you can go forward with confidence and know that he will get the ball and importantly kick goals, then it, that it is the, it's really the, uh, the cream on top of the cake. The team knows that he can do it. They'll be dependent on him to do it. Um, sure, we'll have uh, teams that wait till next year to work out how to you know, combat Tony Modra and we'll lose against the Crows. Tony Modra really made a name for himself in the opening round when he kicked 10 goals against the Tigers, 71 goals later, 81 for the season. He's a bigger star than ever.
Every time he ran onto the ground, you knew this player was capable of something special. On July the 16th against Richmond, he produced it. For Richmond, and Rashudo marks on centre wing member side of the ground. He kicks it with great penetration. Oh, it's a beautiful kick. Not run. Rashudo with some opportunities now. Goes long. McGuinness the target. It's a well-weighted kick by Blackburn. And he's doing a terrific job. He's got a growing strain. Now I think he lifted a little bit getting up, but gee, what a terrific effort by McGuinness. Jamison, probing kick to half forward. Getting that was Lee's lunge and hand right at the top. Well, that's just as good. Not going to kick his seven. Back through. No nonsense, stuff. That's what the footy's all about. Check side. See how it goes. Not bad. Very good. Well, we just might have it all this afternoon. Three goals. Low scoring game. Awkward conditions. Wren gets rid of his opponent and takes the mark on his chest. Away for Tregenza. Tregenza's kick. Very well done, Modra. It was a good effort by the wingman. And a very quickly kicks towards half forward. No mark taken. Back goes Smart. Little left footer off the ground. Lip tack across his body. Jarman in the action. Menegola. Back goes Bob. He's got another one. Five. Now Lee tries to square up, goes to Big Bone, back to McGuinness on the run. Well done, inside, touches it down. Well, I wonder if he could kick it. He's 55, not quite, balanced up, Modra with a fly. Oh, he's a good player. Did that well, didn't he? He's a very good player. And that was a terrific kick by Tony McGuinness. He didn't try to kick the goal, he knew he was too far out. He just kicked it to the front of the goal square. Lip tap, wide for Jarman. In turn, McGuinness. Little kick, very good, Mogra. Schwert from the half back, chipped the ball in very well. Rusciuto, well, he gets to the end. He got a second go, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. chip pass, okay. And going right on. Quickly, but he can get it over the top. He does to Mogra. Well done. Eight goals. Wiedemann again, McGuinness streams away. Goes very, very long. Bouncing ball, what a big ball, putting back Mogra off the ground. Ten. Now McGuinness, and he's knocked up with possessions, Hart backed him up, waited for it, and away he goes. Got such composure for 19 years of age, Jarman with his three goals and enjoying himself. Inside of Jamison is normally a beautiful kick, and that's a marvellous effort. Now Modra setting himself, remembering that he's tied for the Adelaide Crows record on 11. Goes high, and holds it. High one torpedo, this will be difficult to mark. They set themselves to ground. Jarman's kicked three. Here's Modra hit. Could he get his 12? Yes, he can. 12 to Modra, so he's broken the record. Tyson running at it. Richardson got a bit of it in a hurry. Bauer tries to break a tackle. Couldn't quite do it. Handle on the up by Lee. Wiedemann. McGuinness. Jamison, normally a great kick, touches it down. Might try and go all the way here. High one, right to the square. Can Modric get up again and take another one? He's down on the ground, left foot, that's his 13. Oh, 13 with the siren sounding. Well, what a way to finish. 13 goals. Well, he may not be Michael Jordan, but he was here, Modric today. Bullis congratulates him. Adelaide finish on the highest note possible. His club record took him to 94 for the year and a rematch with the West Coast Eagles. It proved once again that a week is a long time in football. Coming off his best ever performance, he didn't get a touch in the first term. But he was soon into it and doing what he does best. Chris Waterman off and uh, Robbie West on for this last minute. This is a terrific effort here by McDermott to trap the ball and give the ball up even better mark a bit of class there that was Modra's first mark of the day started the game needing 6 for 100 he still needs those 6 he's broken he's done he finished with 4 goals 4 from 8 shots his season's total was now 98 oh. really? that was a flip. Really? Modra, 
It took him to Princess Park in round 19. Fitzroy kicked with a strong breeze, but 20 minutes into the first term, the Crows went forward. He will be taken right round. Now, what will he do? The check side kick? Or will he run out and snap it in on the left foot? Look, there's the camera, camera shot. Shows he Tony would Modra. not be seeing as much daylight as what we're seeing between those sticks, Modra. He's going for the banana kick. And I think he's kicked this. Great goal. That was 99. Six minutes into the second term, he became the 25th player in yes. AFL-VFL history to kick the ton. Modra! Modra has marked. 35 metres from goal, he will be kicking for goal number 100 for the season, a magnificent season this player has had, he has thrilled the crowds. Come right from nowhere has he? He has. Take a few deep breaths Pete and uh, the enormous talent. Police have gathered behind the goal, I don't think that will stop them getting onto the ground though. Tony Modra, goal number 100 for the season, he kicks. I think he's got it. Perhaps well done, well Anthony Modra. Great, great effort by the champion for four. Here they come. Modra getting mobbed. And we can only hope from the Crows' point of view he doesn't get injured because this could be pretty dangerous, really. The sentiment's right, but really... I, think he, I suppose you could think he's lucky stars is here and not over in football park because how would you be? 45,000 of those fans. I think it's a shame it's not a football park. He finished with seven for a total of 105. The boy who didn't want to play in Adelaide was now its biggest superstar.